Hey, what's going on guys? Matt back here with another tutorial and today we're going to be doing part three of our game development tutorials. So what we're going to be doing this time is creating car spawn objects. So it's going to be creating cars on the entrances to the scene, all of these. So first thing we're going to do is create an empty object, which would be this one. So if we double click on our floor, just so we get to the center of the scene again, like we did in part one, we can then create an empty object and we've got that there. And then what I've done is create a, created a cube and then add it to, added it as a child to the car spawns that I created just now. And then I've also called this one car spawn, so this one's for spawning the cars. And then I've set its scale to 0.8, 0.5 and 1.5. And those are just so it gets to this kind of size because what we need to do is not be spawning cars on top of other cars if there's one in this kind of area. I've also just turned off the mesh renderer, but we have we can just have a mesh renderer there as well. And then both of these, even the car spawns here, has got scripts. So this one I've then duplicated and moved all the way around the, the scene. So if I just select them all, you've got them on every single entrance that would be in on a road where people could come from. And all of those have all the scripts on them. So if I and I've created them as prefabs as well for the the objects that we're going to be creating from these. So I've got a prefabs directory which is then also got cars inside that because I'm going to have humans and all kinds all kinds of things in there. So we've created um, just the cars thing, and I've also just created for now car target, which is just a box. If I move towards it, it's just literally a box that's going to be what our cars are going to follow, so they have smoother corners and th they're not the thing that's being affected. It's the is an invisible object in front of them. So our scripts, we've got. Um, we've added a new directory called cars and we've got car data and cars and spawn cars. So car data is going to go onto our parent object and what that's going to do is store every single car that's in the scene at the time. So if I open that up, we've got uh, import systems collections generic and that is because we're going to be using a generic list from Unity generic JavaScript list. All we got is a variable of cars which is equal to a list dot and then open arrow uh, angled brackets and then game object capital G and then close that and then close it off as well. So that's just going to create a list every time if we want to add stuff to it. And then we've got our spawn cars script, which we're going to be starting to get into a bit more detail into the games coming from these, this tutorial onwards, adding AI and things. So we've got our car target, which is the empty object which our car is going to be following. And that this one is just the prefab that we're going to be using. And then we've got can spawn is equal to true to start with because it's not going to have anything in the way at the start of the scene. On function start, we've got an invoke repeating which will create which will start spawn. It will do it initially. It will do it instantly, and then it will do it randomly at any time between five and ten using random dot range using capital letters at the start of each of those, and then closing it all off. And then our spawn function we're going to be calling from that every five to ten seconds is going to have a 50-50 chance. As long as it can spawn, as long as can spawn is true, then it will create a variable of this car, which will be the our car target, which we've spawned at the position that we are, and our rotation that's going to create it as a game object, so we can access it easier here. And then we're going to tell our parent because these are added as children to the car spawns. We're going to tell the parent, which will have to be the one that's got the car data script on it. And then that one's cars, it will, will add the car that we've just created. So it's added to the list of cars that's in the scene. So basically we make it and we tell our parent that we that there is one now in the scene. So keep a track of it kind of thing. And then uh, just to make it so we can choose whether we uh, can spawn or not, we've got on trigger stay. So anytime that anything is inside our our area, we can't spawn a car. So we won't just spawn it on top of a person that's walking across the road. Then it, we set our can spawn to false. And you see that we're doing on trigger stay with capital letters at the start of each word. And then I've set it to other. You can call that whatever you want. I prefer to call it other so you know it's the other one that we hit. And then that one's the collider when you're using triggers. We've also got on trigger exit. So whenever we leave to trigger with that with an object, uh, we then set our can spawn to false uh, to true. So you don't always need to use on trigger stay because stay is run constantly as opposed to being run only when you actually enter a trigger or exit trigger because we're setting this every time we leave trigger with something if there's two things in that's triggering with us and one of them leaves then we still have it set to false so we still can't spawn on the other one so back into the scene uh, basically what it's going to be doing if i hit play it randomly is going to create each of these 
uh, objects. Don't forget actually to set these onto the prefab. So onto our car spawns, I've set car target, which is the object of the prefab that I created just just before. Um, all I've done with that is just given it is made a kinem kinematic rigid body, so it will trigger with things, and then made it into a trigger as well. And you don't really need the mesh renderer, but just for testing purposes, it's nice to have it there so you can just see it. So if I hit play, you're going to see that we're going to be randomly creating them. And over a bit of time, we're going to end up having them on every single entrance because it has a chance every five to ten seconds to create one. So that's going to effectively be creating cars into the, into the next tutorial. So stick around for that one and I will see you there.